Okay, so this is going to be a video in which I attempt to catalog my library. I've wanted to catalog my books using the Library of Congress classification system for years and I've just never gotten around to doing it. And I thought it might be interesting if I film the whole process so that if someone else wanted to catalog their books, they would have a reference video where they could see how I went and did it. So let's go ahead and gather some supplies and go to the bookshelf and see how much we can get done today. Now, I have all of my books behind me, but I haven't completely shown my bookshelf tour yet. I might post that before or after this video, but I have to decide which shelf I want to do today. I have a lot to choose from. I could do all of my education books first or my Spanish language books first, but I think those will be more challenging to do. They may not all have call numbers already. I could do my older books that I've had for a while. Or I could do some of my newer books. I think these newer books will most likely all have call numbers, but I think I wanna start with this top shelf because I have a lot of the same authors here. Cataloging my books, cataloging my books. To actually catalog most of these books that I picked today, I'm not going to have to do that much work because as you'll see in a moment, most of the time the Library of Congress cataloging number is actually on the inside of the book on the publication page. If I look inside this first book, it's Heather Lynn's Take Good Care of the Garden and the Dogs. I go to the publication page and usually somewhere in the bottom or in the middle, it'll actually say here, the Library of Congress has cataloged the hardcover. So it's not this actual edition, because this is a paperback, but the hardcover. And this is all of the categories and the subcategories, and this is how it is cataloged. F914.H34L47, 2010. So I'm gonna look up what that catalog references, but that's the catalog number that I will put on the spine. So what you'll see when you get into the Library of Congress classification system is that they have basically headings for every subject that you're going to have. And since this one, the call number starts with an F, I wanna dive into what does that mean? What is the F heading? And then it's F914. And so if we look, that actually falls into the heading of F1 through 975, which is just United States local history. And it looks like if we get into, what was this one, 914, F914, we have to go all the way down. I bet it has something to do with Alaska. Yep, specifically F914 falls right into F901 to 951, which is specifically Alaska. So this book is under the heading of 
U.S. local history and specifically Alaska. I was curious if it would fall under some kind of a memoir heading or something like that, but it falls specifically into a heading of Alaska. Next, I'm going to look up Black Klansmen, and it's probably in the book. For Black Klansmen, the data is actually right here. You can see the classification number. And it looks like the subheadings are about white supremacy and hate crimes in the United States and undercover operations. So let's look up what that actually references. Next, I'm going to do um, what Alice forgot. And I think this is an English writer. So since she's an English writer, that is in P. So let's see where this is going to fall. Nope, oh, yep, there it is, specifically. All the cataloging information that you need right there inside the book. I was wrong though, it's not English, it's Australian. Because it's Australian fiction, Australian domestic fiction. Next, I'm going to do Big Little Lies. Since it's by the same author and it's a similar theme, I imagine it'll probably be in a similar spot. So probably in the PR, and then the cutter number is probably going to be similar since it references the author. So let's see how similar the call number is of what Alice forgot to Big Little Lies. The call number is here. And you can see that this call number is also PR, and it's also 9619.4, and it's still M67, but the second cutter is different. So I'm curious. That's one thing I haven't been able to find a lot of information about is the cutter numbers. I know that they reference the author, but I'm curious how sometimes the same author will have a different cutter number. I'm really curious about how that works. I don't have details for that. But for now, I'm just going to put it in as is. The next one I'm going to do is um, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Now this is a nonfiction book. It's kind of written like a novel, but it is nonfiction. So I am curious where this book will lie. I'm not really familiar with where it will be. So here's the copyright, Rebecca Skloot, 2010. All right, here's the publication data right here. And here's the call number. So it looks like I need to figure out what RC is going to be. So it looks like R is medicine. So this is actually classified as a medicine book. RC is internal medicine. So that's interesting. It's classified as an internal medicine book. RC 265.6, so 265. Okay, so it fits right into here, into neoplasms, including tumors, oncology, cancer, and carcinogens. So that's interesting because that means that they're classifying this book more about the actual science behind it. It's classified in basically cancer, which is what, if you haven't read this book, the Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. It is about how they used her cervical cancer um, genes and what they got from taking her cervical cancer and how it was used and how it affected the family. So when I read this book, to me, it was more about the family, but I do like that it's classified under medicine. Next, I'm going to do all of my current Jodi Picoult books, but I'm going to do them together because I want to see how these books are classified differently. In theory, they should all be classified together around because she's an American author and she's written all of her books around the same time. But I am curious if, because she writes about such broad subjects, if that has been taken into account at all in the classification. So the first one is Leaving Time. And here's the classification right here. This one is a PS, so that tells me this one's just going to be classified as 
an American author from, there's a, it's common I think that there's a subheading for 2001. So I wonder if all of these will be classified that way. The next one is Keeping Faith. Let's see how this one's been classified. Again, another PS. So a lot of her books, that's nice because that means her books will probably be cataloged and then therefore it's shelved close together. What I have found sometimes, and I think it was, I was researching, it might have even been the Harry Potter books. There was some series that I just remember, they weren't classified together. It might have been the Hunger Games. Let me see if this one is classified. I don't actually see classification data here. I might have to look this one up on their website because I'm not seeing anything in Small Great Things. I do see here where it was published. Yeah, they don't have the classification data. That's weird because I've had this book for a while and it came out in hardcover so I know they would have had it classified at least by then. Sometimes if it's from maybe somewhere foreign or if it is early and they haven't cataloged it yet, it won't have the data inside of it. But let's try Spark of Light. So the next one will be Spark of Light. Oh, and yep, here it is right here in the front. I see it. Where is that call number? Here it is. Another PS. So I'll just have to look up small great things, but it looks like most of them are going to be classified in the PS section, which from my memory, that's just American literature of a certain time frame. I believe it's after 2001, and so they're all going to be classified near each other, which that's a good thing. Another thing that I noticed when I was looking through the Jodi Picoult books is that their, their classification number is 3566, which puts them into American literature with individual authors between 1961 and 2000. And so I'm curious, does that mean that it's when the author was born? Because this book was published in 2018, which is also part of the call number. But it must be, I'm wondering if it's when the author was born or when the author first published something. I'm going to make the assumption that it's when they were born, but I'm curious about that part of the call number. The next book I'm going to do is In Her Shoes. Now, this author is not from the United States. I believe she's from either Ireland or Scotland, and it's unfortunate that I don't better know the difference. I haven't read this book in a long time, but let us see. No, I don't see any information here. She might be from the UK. because I recognize the publisher from some of my Lisa Jewell books. It is, where did I just see that publisher name? Well, this is Washington Square Press. Oh, there it is, Simon and Schuster. I'm pretty sure Simon and Schuster publishes, or it's trademarks of them. I don't know if that's the publishing company, but their name is on Lisa Jewell's books, I believe. I could be incorrect on that one. So I will have to look up in her shoes and see what the cataloging information is for that one. Okay, next up, I'm curious because I'm going to be somewhat comparing these two. That's why I have them here together because they're both historical fiction and they both have like a World War II reference. So I'm really curious where they're going to fit. I don't know the authors, I believe this, Kristen Hanna, let's see. Oh, it says she's lived in the Pacific Northwest and in Hawaii. And this author, Heather Morris, is native of New Zealand and now residing in Australia. And so I'm curious, this is an American author. This is um, not American, so she won't be in the American section and they're both historical fiction and they have similar concepts. So where will these books land? Let's start with um, The Tattooist of Auschwitz. 
And let's see if I can get publication and classification information originally published in the United Kingdom. So according to this book, they have applied, it says Library of Congress classification applied for. So I'll show you right here. So this book, it just says it's applied for. So I'll have to look and see if it has come out since then. So we don't have anything yet from the book on that one. With this book, The Nightingale, let's see what we can get from the classification data. Okay, so this one is fully classified. Obviously the hardcover one, and most of these, the hardcover is classified, but the um, paperback just has the hardcover classification information in it. And here it is right here. You see that? That's another PS. So this is simply fitting, and it's PS 3558. So this one is again just fitting, even though it is um, has a World War II topic, it is still fitting right just into the general fiction section. So that is interesting. I was curious how that would work. Let's look up now the Tattooist of Auschwitz and see where that fits in the catalog. All right, I found it and it exists. And it starts with a P, which means it's just gonna be in the literature. I wasn't sure if historical fiction was directly into just the same fiction category, but it is. So it's PR 9639, PR 9639. Let's see where that would fit. PR is, you go to the very top, PR is English literature and it was PR, I can't remember what I said, 9639, PR 9639, same, so it's categorized, which other one was categorized there? Oh, I believe it was just all the Leanne Moriarty, Leanne Moriarty. PR 9639. Yep, same category as that. So now I know historical fiction just fits right into the literature of the author who wrote it. Good to know. The next book we're going to do is Fates and Furies, and this one should be easy because. It's just a novel. It's not even historical fiction for me to get confused about. It isn't really about any topics that I think would make it topical. So it's just going to be a novel, which means it's going to be P. And it's going to be based on the author. So if I turn it around, we see here it's Lauren Goff. And I'm fairly certain that the book took place mostly in the United States, which tells me that the author is most likely from the United States. So I think that it was PS is the United States or American literature and like three, five, five something is what I'm thinking. I was close, but I'm not quite there. So if you look here, it is a PS, but it's actually three, six. 3607. And this book is much older than I thought because the last number is always the year. It's 2015. And I thought this was kind of a modern book because of when my friend suggested we read it for the we read it for the book club, but it's actually from 2017. So what you learn from a call number. The next two books I'm going to do because I'm curious how they compare are Becoming by Michelle Obama and Born a Crime, Trevor Noah. The thing that I'm curious about is I know there is a section for memoirs. So do both of these books fit into the memoir section? Um, Trevor Noah's book, Born a Crime, is also really humorous. And so does it fit into a subclass of humor? I'm really curious, how will these two compare? So let's take a look. I don't even know. Well, and then the other thing is Michelle Obama is American and she's from Chicago, Southside, like she always says, and Trevor Noah 
is from South Africa. So he's not an American author. So does he fit in a different section there? So I don't even, I can't even begin to figure out what their call numbers might be. I don't even have a guess. Copyright 2018. So we have to request the catalog information. So I'll have to look it up for becoming. The data is available upon request. So I'm going to request it. And by request, I just mean I'm going to go to their catalog and look it up. Becoming. So I'm looking at Michelle Obama's book and I didn't even think about how there are a lot of books written about her. So I need to specify and do an advanced search to make her the author of the book and not the subject. Okay, so here we have the book. It's under E, which E maybe biography what well, would be autobiography if anything so e909.024023 2018 let's see what that catalog means e909 what could it be what could it be e history of the americas 909 united states So E909 is specifically Barack Obama's administration. So this book, Becoming by Michelle Obama, which is, I would say it's more of like her memoir. It's interesting to me. It is classified under Barack Obama's administration. It's interesting. They have some of the subheadings there, president's spouse, which is interesting because it doesn't say first lady. It says president's spouse. I wonder how long it has said president's spouse as like a subject underneath biography. Now let's look at Trevor Noah. That's definitely not going to be under Barack Obama's administration. And I don't even know that it would even fit under E because E is about America and his book is about his life in South Africa. So let's see, copyright 2016. And it has the data right here. Let's see, where's the call number? Here it is, right here. So these call numbers aren't, these call numbers aren't even close. His starts with an L, or sorry, <clears throat> his starts with a P. So PN, let's figure out what PN is for. Language and literature, obviously we know the P, language and literature, but what is PN? PN is general literature. That's interesting, general literature. Let me get specific. 2,287, PN 2,287. I mean, it's under special regions or countries, but it's also under dramatic representation sort of let me look a little bit closer it's under the subcategory of drama so 1600 to 3307 so pn 16 1635 sorry pn 1600 to pn 3307 is drama which he fits under drama <clears throat> After that, there are some subcategories. Broadcasting, non-broadcast, motion pictures. He's not under motion pictures. There's dramatic representation in theater, which it is under that. So it's under dramatic representation, the theater, and then special regions or countries. I almost feel like I need to double check because to me that does not seem like the accurate place for this book. PN... 2,287. 2,287. No, nope, that's right where it fits. Special regions or countries. So maybe because it is... Because he's from South Africa. If you look, though, they do have subjects within here. And in his subjects... If you didn't look close, I'll put it up for you. It does have biography, it does have comedy, it does have 
So comedians, United States biography, comedians, South Africa biography, television personalities, U.S. biography. And in Michelle Obama's book, I do remember seeing biography there as well. And I wonder if you don't classify autobiographies. Oh, I forgot her data. I had to look it up. So in her data, let me refresh it. Some of the subjects were Michelle Obama, so she herself is the subject, 1964 was when she was born, President's Spouse, United States Biography, Afri African American Women Lawyers, Illinois, Chicago, Biography, Legislator Spouses, United States Biography. Just an interesting way to classify these two books. Now that I have looked up all the call numbers for these books, I'm going to go ahead and put labels on all of them. So I've only done a few books today, but I'll go ahead and label all of them and check back in after the labels are done. Now that I've made the labels, I just need to take the labels and attach them to the books and then put the books in order on the shelf. Now that all of these books have labels, I'm just going to make room on the shelf so that I can put the books up in the correct order. Most of the books are going to be in either the PS or the PR, so either the American literature or the English literature, and we only had a few outliers. So as I go through and catalog the rest of my books, I should find more that can go with those few outliers that I had this time. I'm going to start putting my collection on this shelf. Uh, I don't think that they will stay here after I start cataloging more books, but for now I'm going to put the ones that I've already cataloged onto this shelf. Now when you're putting uh, books up in the order of the Library of Congress system, let me see if I can get you some books here. You first want to look at the letters. So since this is PR and this is HS, you look at line one and line one here is P and here is H. So this would go in this order because H comes before P. So this would go in this order. Here I have another PR book. It's The Tattooist of Auschwitz. And so I need to figure out how I'm going to put this book in comparison to the other PR I already have on the shelf. If we bring it back, next you have to look at the second line. So we had PR for both of them, so we have to go to the second line. The second line you read as if it is a traditional number. There's no decimal place. So the first one is 9639.4, and this is 9619.4. So actually this would go in front because 9619 is before 9639. If I bring in this other book by the same author, I have another um, Leanne Moriarty. I need to learn how to pronounce her name, but I need to compare that to what Alice forgot. So if you look, the first line for both of these is PR, and the second line for both is 9,619.4. So then I need to look at the second line 
which is and the second or sorry the third line and you have to read it as a decimal so because these have a decimal place in front of the m the m would be alphabetical but these are both m so then i have to look at the next number and read it as a decimal and they're both actually 0.67 so it's both decimal place um, 67 hundredths so i can't use that third line so i have to go to the fourth line which in this case this is b54 and this one is um, w48 so the b54 would come before w48 because b comes before w the last thing you would Bondi. the last thing you would look at if every single other line is the same as the year and you would take the year and obviously you just put the year in order. Another thing that I don't have on any of mine is if you have more than one volume in your collection, you would put like V1, V2, uh, and then you would put them in order by the correct volume. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of these books up here in the correct order, and I'll check in with you after that. I'm gonna put all of my PS books up at the same time, and then I'll fix the order of these. So these are all of my American literature books. Now I'm gonna get the rest of my PRs and organize them together. Just kidding, I'd already done all of my PRs. I thought I had another one left. I do have a PN though, Born a Crime, Trevor Noah. So that'll come before the PR because it's a PN. And I only have a couple left, I only have three, three left. I have an F, which obviously was before H. And then I have an R which goes at the end, because R comes after P, obviously. And then I have E, and I think that'll be my very first book, E. So there we have a small section of my entire collection organized and categorized using the Library of Congress classification system. My plan is to get to the rest of the books, Today just took a little bit longer because I was going through the process and explaining it, but in the future I will probably be able to do it a little bit quicker. I'm also really excited just to see uh, if I can figure out where it would fit in the catalog system before I look at the actual catalog. Anyway, I want to see if I'm able to figure out where the books will go before I actually categorize them, before I actually look up the call numbers and see where they actually fit.